Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at setting the angle of incidence for the horizontal stabilizers, putting the horizontal stabilizers on, the elevators, the rudder, and then knocking out the trim tabs. I think that's everything. So the first thing we did was install this crossover tube that the horizontal stabilizer is attached to. It comes well labeled and with spacers zip tied to the outer holes. The vertical position of this tube determines the angle of incidence for the horizontal stabilizer and is adjusted by the length of the spacers or bushings. Our plans specify that we should set this angle at a negative 2 degrees below the longitudinal axis. So given the degree of deflection and knowing this distance between the two points, we calculated the distance this front crossover tube should be below the level line. To measure this, we first set the plane up in a level flight attitude by raising the tail until the lower longeron just behind the landing gear was level. Then we shot a level line with a laser level through the center line of the rear tube attachment point for the horizontal stabilizer and measured how far the center of the front tube was from the longitudinal axis. Next, we slid the horizontal stabilizers into place and bolted them to the front tube. The struts for the horizontal stabilizer have a notched end and a threaded end. Custom made forged bolts come with a kit for the threaded end. To mount them, you slide the bottom end on the mounting tab welded on the tail, and then bolt the top end to the front of the horizontal stabilizer. The threaded portion provides the adjustment necessary to level the stabilizers. The elevators ride on bearings in the tail. Before mounting the elevators, we needed to enlarge the holes a little to fit the bearings. We did this with a little drum sander chucked in a drill. We'd remove a little material at a time, frequently checking the fit until it was perfect. Next, we bolted the bearings to the attachment point in the tail. After the bearings were installed in the tail, then we could install the elevators. The clearances are pretty tight here, so you have to have everything positioned just right uh, to allow the horns on the end of the elevator to slide into place. But they will move into place nicely with no resistance when everything is lined up, so there's no need to force anything. I'm sure it's obvious to everyone but myself, but install the side with the nut first. You need the little bit of added clearance the bulkhead side provides once one side is already in place. The horns on the end of the elevators attach with four bolts. The bolt at the top and the bottom have a bushing. The center two bolts have a large aluminum washer. These come with the kit. The trim tabs come welded in place, so I cut them out with a hacksaw. Then 
Then I cleaned up both ends of the elevator and the trim tabs with a grinder. The hinges are welded in place already, so once the tabs are cut free, you can stick a pin in them. The trim torque tubes are held in place by two bushings. One comes welded in place. The second you rivet in place to ensure perfect alignment of the torque tubes. I drilled a couple holes, divert everything, and then set the rivets. The rudder attaches with two bolts. The top bolt will also be the attachment point for the tail wires. The top tail wires go from that bolt to the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer, and then from the same point down to the mounting tab that the shock strut attaches to. Next, we fasten the two trim horns back to back. When mounted in the tail, the trim horns are to be offset from the center line. We shot a plumb line with a laser level along the center line and then adjusted the alignment accordingly. Arms attach to the outboard side of the torque tubes. Before drilling these in place, we adjusted the length so that the push rods would run straight down to the trim tabs. Then we fasten the arms to the end of the torque tubes. To keep everything from moving left or right, spacers are installed between the arm and the rib. I'm using nylon spacers. After securing both ends, it was time to drill the inboard side of the torque tubes. First, we aligned both arms and the trim horns so they were all pointing in the same direction. Once aligned, we drilled them. Since most of the tail components will need to come back off, we're using a lot of temporary fasteners and not tightening the nuts down, putting in the cotter keys or things like that. Even though it all has to come back apart, we installed the trim tab push rods to make sure it would all line up correctly and see them in action. Alright guys, that's all I got for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Boy, I sure do wish I had a garage to park my car in. <laughs>